Hey, He-Man, who's next? Here's your look at the Mattel Masters of the WWE Universe, Goldberg. WWE and Masters of the Universe combine into a powerful force. The Masters of the WWE Universe channel the power with this highly poseable action figure, a WWE superstar, as a Masters of the Universe character. Now, before we get a closer look at the masters of the WWE Universe Goldberg, the first thing we're going to want to do is take this tape measure of mine and put it right at the very top of his bald head. Probably shouldn't have said that so loud. Sorry, Goldberg, I wasn't commenting on your bald head. We're going to take it, though, right to the very top of his head, though, stopping it right there. Masters of the WWE Universe Goldberg stands 6.8 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the figure is almost 17 and a half. Almost, but not quite there. He's instead about 17.4 centimeters in height. Wait, you're looking at a Masters of the WWE Universe figure? Sure am, and have in the past as well. In fact, the proof is in the pudding. Here we are bringing a couple of figures in. Here he is next to Seth frickin' Rollins. We can also bring in the Fiend. Let's bring in Jake the Snake Roberts, who apparently didn't get as much the introduction as... Seth Rollins did. But at least it gives you an idea that all the figures are still utilizing that same traditional Masters of the Universe Origins body. Heads are different, armors are different, and of course their accessories that we'll look at in a second are also different from one another as well. Speaking of the accessories, let's tackle the accessories right now. Starting first with a mini comic. Mini not only just the size, but the just the, the amount of pages. Quite substantially small. Um, it says on the inside, it's Goldberg as heroic human jackhammer. You can see him displayed with his armor, his helmet, and his axe that we'll look at in a second. And then on the inside, this is all we're getting. Just a single single page. <sighs> no, that's just, just a single page. And then on the back, you're also getting a treatment to the other characters that would have made up this wave. And FYI, though, I have also picked up Stephanie McMahon. They were the only two I could find at my local Walmarts. These are, I think, slightly older figures. But of course, me now getting into these Master Universe Origins figures full in, I decided to pick up a couple more of these. So you may have seen these in stores for quite some time now. Let's put the comic to the side because really, I mean, honestly, it's not the most interesting of things to look at. And let's have a look at the accessories he comes included with. Okay, so he gets himself uh, a helmet. The helmet's a little on the squished side. I get very much the read and vibe of Ram Man when I'm not only looking at the armor that's on Goldberg's body, but also his helmet as well, which again, it's a little on the squishy side. It has some nice detailing done to it. You can see little rivets all around there, all around there. Rivets, rivets, rivets. Let's go ahead and take it and we'll go ahead and put it on the figure's head. It slides into place like that. And you can obviously see why they would have gone with the softer plastic. It just makes it a lot easier to fit it onto his head. At least it carries on, and again, this is where I'm getting that vibe of Ram Man, where the armor goes right basically into the helmet. I don't think it's supposed to be like one piece necessarily. I mean, obviously he's going to have head articulation, but yeah, very much getting a Ram Man vibe. Speaking of Ram Man, actually, the other accessory he comes included with is a battle axe. Not just any battle axe, but so happens to be the battle axe that came included with Ram Man. We'll bring Ram Man's in so you can see the difference between the two. I'm almost feeling inclined to pillage this one from Goldberg and display it with Ram Man, just because it's got, as you can see, a much shinier looking silver finish. Same ha same axes, though. And speaking of which, let's just move over Goldberg. I know, because we're going to be going to do more of these comparisons in a second. Here he is next to Ram Man. You can definitely see, even like the chains and the way it's sort of harnessed at the front, very much similar to what we're getting here with Goldberg. But also going back to the axes that we were talking about, the more matte finish is fine and good, but, you know, again, looking at that, that more shinier, prettier looking finish, when we look at Ram Man, it's actually a lot closer to being like the coloring of his armor. So what I might end up just doing, shh, we're not going to tell Goldberg. I'm not going to tell him that we're going to do this because he's totally going to spear me. But yeah, I think that looks a lot nicer than this one did. It just doesn't look as close enough to the rest of the shiny armor that comes for Ram Man. Yeah, I'm going to definitely display him, I think, with this. The other axe he comes included with, I think, is just throwaway anyways, but I would probably be more inclined to display him with this. 
Anyways, let's just move Ram Man out of the way. Clearly, this re review isn't going to be about him, but you can go ahead and take the Battle Axe. We're going to stick with the one that came with the figure for the time being. That just fits into his hands like that. He oh, he only comes with the one. But I've noticed like the axe doesn't fit in his hand very well. There we go. It gets a little wobbly at times. I guess that's going to be a little bit more stable this time around. And you can actually fit it into both one of his hands. So that is his accessories. Let's put those to the side. I'll definitely be making use of that battle axe. And you know what, while we're also at it, one last look at him with his total, total armor going on here. Spin it around so you can see it on the back. Yes, it is removable, by the way. We're going to go do and do that in a second. Shame it's got a big noticeable printing on the back. 2019, I guess, was when this came out. Or maybe when the original molds were used. 2019. But let's go ahead, take the helmet off. And you got a very stock-looking Goldberg, which really could have also been used for Stone Cold Steve Austin. I get very much the, the, the vibe of both of those. And if you wanted to... Looking at the armor quickly, you can see little skulls and stuff at the bottom of it with the chains. Boy, that looks neat. I would really like to use this for something else. But you can go ahead, just on the back, and you just detach these. They're on very large pegs, but still very easy to remove. Just detach it like this. It would also be helpful to remove his head. I probably should have done that first, and then just go ahead and slide this all off. So if you want to have just a regular Goldberg, you can really do that. Nothing really to him looks like... I mean, key man, other than, other than the fact he's just got little gauntlets there on his wrist, but all the rest of it pretty much just reads as a very stocky looking Goldberg or Stone Cold Steve Austin or Luke Harper. Kind of looks a little bit like, is it Luke Harper? The, the Good Brothers? A little bit, I don't know. Anyways, a nice looking Goldberg. You can see he's got the tattoo there on the one side. He's not, doesn't have, I think Goldberg actually has a tattoo on the other side now as well, but his famous thorn tattoo is there, clearly printed. A little bit of it has made its way up onto his shoulder. A little more of the additional paint down below as well. It's a little little sloppy. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. It's not a bad-looking head sculpt. I kind of wish in ways that they could have given him a more anger, open-mouth expression. Just instead of giving a, giving him this sort of blasé, blasé-looking head. Um, again, he's just got basically a regular master's body underneath all that. So I probably will still get the armor going. You know what? Let's go, Let's get the armor back on him. You got enough of it. You can see his body there. Then now we'll go ahead and actually put this back on. I just like the look of it a lot more. And this also helps to show you guys how to put it back on. Just slide it over top of his torso. Slide these around to the back and just going to plug these in place. That's it. Super easy. Not that this part of the review would necessarily serve as a tutorial, but there you go. How to put the armor back onto Goldberg's body. And let's go ahead. Pop that back on. And we've got Goldberg. Now his lower half, unfortunately, again, you got more of that little paint on the bottom of it. It's supposed to have a white trim. And it succeeds in that. But then it's got a whole bunch of this little white flaking of paint that's down below here. And I don't even know what's happened here. It looks like one big eyelash has just found its way. A very thick eyelash has found its way onto all this fairly messy looking paint on the front of it. He does have his knee pads and his, of course, wrestling attire boots. Which do have, of course, possibility. We'll talk about that in a second. You know, as a certainly stock Goldberg, if if you're into this line, of course. If you're not, then no matter what I'm saying about this line, isn't going to necessarily sell you. But I kind of like it. I, you know, I like Goldberg works well with this type of armor. I don't know what I would have done differently to it. And again, bringing in Ram Man, you can definitely see. Yeah, there's a lot of inspiration happening here between the two. And no, you can't take this off or move it with that. This this is attached to his body, after all. And they're about the same height to one another. Goldberg would just be a tad taller. Just a tad taller, but a half a head taller than Ram Man. For the articulation on Goldberg, so it will be the same as the other Masters figures. The head rotates all the way around. Um, very loose. Very loose on the head. Up, down, back, forth, all the way around. That's Goldberg. Waist swivels all the way around as well. Uh, the arms come out. Well, again, you know, you, you, you've been here. You've done all this before. You, you know the territory that we're covering. Four and back on the arms. They get a little hung up, unfortunately, because he got that shoulder piece that goes over top. The way it overhangs the shoulders does limit a little bit what you can then do with the arms moving forward. And yes, he does have the thumbs up hand. Kind of wish that they could have given him a, like a pointing finger. If he's going to be screaming, you're next. It would have been nice if they had done that instead of just, well, again, I know they had to go with the traditional master's hands. He has a swivel at that forearm. It bends also at the elbow. 
And of course, like he's got these elbow pads, but it doesn't really limit what you can do with bringing the arms forward. And of course, you can rotate the hands all the way around as well. Let's get those down. For the legs, they split out. Almost a full splits for Goldberg. You can bring them forward and back. And I know they're not really advertising these anymore, but again, you can bend the knee if you want to get them more in their retro poses. I think that's... I'm, I'm really glad they don't really advertise that anymore. It's, it's, essentially, it's essentially just knee articulation. That's what it is. Uh, the boots swivel back and forth. You can bring the feet forward and back. And there's also an ankle pivot there as well. So there is Goldberg. Not a bad looking figure. There's, of course, I think room for improvement because when you get him just a stock head sculpt like this, yeah, he does kind of look like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think where they could have differentiated that a bit by having his mouth open, screaming something different. But I guess really none of the head sculpts have had really extreme poses to it. Goldberg could have been the exception. Sadly, he's not. He's kind of basically just a really stock, simple looking Goldberg. Not a bad looking figure, but I think there's definitely room that they could have improved upon him. In final looks, here on the Rotisserie, the masters of the WWE Universe, Goldberg is giving the thumbs up A-OK, -okay, which I guess means the figure's fine. The figure's OK. It is not as maybe interesting as maybe some of the other masters of the WWE Universe figures that we've had a look at. Chalk it up to the fact that Goldberg has pretty simple looking wrestling attire anyways. Of course, they clearly try to jazz things up by giving him the big armor. Kind of got a legion of doom thing almost going on i'm probably sure that they could use that for a legion of doom masters of the wwe universe as well but for goldberg at least it does give a little something extra to look at stated already of course in this review a couple of times it does get very much that look of ram man especially when he's got the helmet on maybe without the helmet he sort of looks just like a stock stone cold steve austin I know they were trying to go with Goldberg, but just again, when you're giving him a neutral head sculpt like this, get kind of getting a little more of the vibe of Stone Cold than I am with Goldberg. And then, of course, you look at the rest of the outfit and you got the thorn tattoo on his arm and you're like, OK, I guess it's supposed to be Goldberg then. I have not displayed him, obviously, uh, with the, the axe. Probably still going to use that axe, I think, for Ram Man, just because the colors are so identical to his armor anyways. The shinier silver definitely works a lot better. And if anything, consider these Masters of Universe WWE Universe figures to be more fodder than anything else. You can use really the parts for other figures or, again, with the WWE Universe figures or really just Master Universe Origins figure as a whole, you can customize them. Pop off arms, pop off legs, and really come up with your very own designs if you want to. And that's kind of neat appeal of being able to mix and match those parts. At the end of the day, I don't think I've really mixed and matched any of the Origins figures, but it's there. It's on the table. Use it if you want. Use it at your disposal if you want to. Have you picked up the Masters of the WWE Universe figure of Goldberg? If you have, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it, or just based on this review and this review alone. If you guys are new to this channel and enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and keep your papers peeled to this channel because there will in fact be more reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.